Welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Today we're going to have a look at three different types of rimfire rifle. We've got a semi-automatic rifle, we've got heavier long-range precision rimfire and we've also got a lighter walnut stock sporting rifle which is great for vermin control and hunting small game. This is a Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. It's a semi-automatic rifle and it uses a 25 round magazine. The magazines are in large banana shape like this, so it looks like an AR-15. And although this one is blue platinum color, they're available in black and in flat dark earth and in also a color called Muddy Girl, which is actually pink and black. These are based around the AR-15 format, so you've got an extending stock like this, you've got T-handle cocking on the back, the controls on the side are the same as an AR-15, there's a safety catch here, allowing you to make the rifle safe and fire. There's a full length Picatinny rail on top, allowing you to mount scopes as easily as you like. There's a handguard, and there's also M-lock on the handguard for accessories. This rifle comes with a short piece of Picatinny rail, which allows you to add a bipod like this one on the front, this Atlas. This is screw cut on the barrel, so you can add a sound moderator or muzzle brake if you really want to. But the joy of 2-2 rimfire is it's very quiet and very economical to shoot. So with a sound moderator on, you really aren't disturbing many people at all. The magazine loads in a single column, one at a time, at the top like this. It's always better just to ease the spring pressure as you're loading them, but don't drop it all the way down and throw them all in because they will tend to jam because the rims overlap. Magazine slots in the bottom here, and there's a magazine release button on the side there. But to actually load the rifle now, you can pull the T-handle back and release it and it will spring forward, or on the opposite side, there is actually a bolt release catch. And when I press that, the bolt will slide forward, load the round and it's ready to fire. Semi-automatic rimfires are very popular for competition shooting where you've got a lot of fire and movement. They're great for multi-position shooting and of course, because they replicate the real thing in larger 223 calibers, you can use them exactly as you would in large civilian service rifle competition. Something like the CZ457 is a great rifle for longer range precision shooting. It's a heavier gun, heavier barrel, the stock has more adjustability. We've got a cheek piece and we've also got a recoil pad we can change positions on. It's a standard 457 format, so we can actually change barrels and calibers in it within the range, which is 22 rimfire, 22 WMR or 17 HMR. The magazines are a conventional type shared across the whole CZ range. This is a 10 shot, but it comes with a 5 shot. Same thing though, it loads from the top vertically one at a time, either 5 or 10 rounds. Being a bolt action rifle, it's one shot per bolt operation. for target use or long-range precision, it's better to have a heavier gun with a lot more ergonomic flexibility to suit you well. It's important too to have a nice crisp precise trigger and a bolt handle which can be operated with as little movement as possible which would disturb the rifle on aim. The mags drop out, we can have spares, we can easily replace them. Most rimfire rifles do come screw cut for a sound moderator and adding one does minimise noise to a huge extent, making it far more sociable to shoot one of these and you don't need ear defenders either. Something like a bipod is a great addition to any rimfire, makes it more stable for prone shooting or when you've got a support surface to shoot from. Factors like this LRP where you've got a butt hook and an underside rail here, you can add a monopod for more precision aiming solutions and fine adjustment of elevation. It's also great when you're shooting with just your hand underneath because you can actually control elevation by squeezing your hand like this. The larger grip means you can put thumb over the top or thumb around the side. Having a Picatinny rail, whether it has extra elevation built in or not, 
makes it far easier adding larger target scopes or night vision units. Something like this Steyr Zephyr 2 is in 17 HMR. Now, this is available in 2.2 rimfire and as well as 2.2 WMR, but it represents a completely different type of rifle. It's a lightweight walnut stock, it's a sporting rifle, it's great for vermin control or for small game like rabbits and hares. In a hunting environment, a lighter rifle is a far more beneficial factor because you've got to carry it around. You've got to make improvised shots from maybe from sticks or a bipod or leaning on a fence post or a gate, something like that. Something like this rifle with a beautiful walnut stock, it's warm to the touch, it looks great, but it is easy to damage and you may want something like a lightweight synthetic stock on a similar action and similar barrel to make sure it's more tough and durable for the lifetime it's going to last. This one, as I said, is in 17 HMR, so you have a much smaller bullet, 17 grain, 17 calibre, doing 2,500 feet per second, instead of the 40 grain soft lead bullet of the 2.2 LR, which is only doing about 1,050 feet per second. Because of the speed, you get a lot flatter trajectory, and it's also better in crosswind conditions. Being supersonic makes for much more muzzle report, but it's worth it because you can take down animals as large as foxes at intermediate distances with a 17 HMR. For all your hunting shots, practicing from sticks and other real world conditions, being able to use a rimfire, which is similar to your centerfire rifle to practice, is much, much cheaper because the ammunition cost is far lower. The principles are all still the same, and of course you can practice trajectory and longer distance shooting without as much physical space required to do it. That's one of the great advantages of rimfire that's too often ignored. Well, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you can see my weekly uproads. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.